In this video, we're going to edit a virtual service file and change the data that it responds back with. And we're going to use a virtual service which was created from a WSDL. So we can see here in this transaction bundle that we have the get user WSDL transaction bundle which was generated in a previous video. And we can see that we have just the get user operation right now in the transaction bundle. And below here is the get user WSDL virtual service created from the bundle. And the virtual service is very simple. It just has one transaction in it, which is a get user transaction. And we have the uh, URL and the port number right here for the virtual service when we start to run it. So let's go ahead and run the virtual service and take a look and see how this is working. So I'll copy the URL and we'll use the API Explorer to test this virtual service. So right now I've pasted in the URL to the virtual service. And here I'm going to need some data for the request. So I'll go ahead and grab the request data here and copy this. Come back to the API Explorer, paste that in. And then when I click send, it is going to send this request to the virtual service. And you can see we got a response back. Now the data in here does not look very meaningful with the way it came back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the virtual service image file. So to do that, we'll jump back over to our virtual service and we'll stop it. And we can see we have the service image editor displaying right here. And we can see the transactions in the image file itself. And we're going to modify these transactions to bring back a little bit more meaningful data from this virtual service. So looking at the transaction data, in our default transaction here, we can see that we have a value that is just a randomly generated alphanumeric value. And the operator is anything because this is our default transaction. And below it is our specific transaction with the same value in it. So what we want to do is to change these transactions so that we are matching differently so that when the requests are processed, we're going to get different match types and also change the body of the response that comes back so that it's a little bit more meaningful when it is returned from the virtual service. So in our default transaction, we're just going to leave this as it is. What we really want to focus on for the moment is our specific transaction. So for this example, let's just pretend that we're looking for responses from two different usernames. We want an admin and we want a guest. So to get started, what we want to do in our specific transaction is change this first one so it's our admin. So we're going to say if the username equals admin, then use this transaction. And to make sure, or to provide some more meaningful data, I should say here, we'll go back in here and in the first name, We'll put in admin and last name. We'll put in user. And then down below here, the role key is regular. We'll put in admin. And let's make that caps. OK, so I'll click on save. And let's run our virtual service and see what happens now. So go back up to our API Explorer. And if we just leave this as it is, or actually we could just put in any value we wanted to. We could type in one, two, three. We hit send. And we're getting back. We can see it says regular and a bunch of uh, randomized data. But now, if we change the username to admin, and we hit send, we can see that now the data is coming back from the transaction that we modified. So we can say the user or the first name is admin and the last name is user. And down below, the role key is admin. All right, so so far so good. So let's go back to our virtual service and stop it here. And we'll go back into our service image editor. And what we want to do next is create a response that will come back if it's not an admin, it's going to come back as guest. So to do that, 
we'll duplicate this specific transaction. We'll click on this icon right here to duplicate it. And now we can see we have two transactions. So what we can do to make this easy is to just change the operator to does not equal admin. And if it doesn't equal admin, then we're going to have a guest user. And we'll scroll back up to the first name, last name. And we'll change the first name to guest. And we'll click on save. And now we have two specific transactions. One is saying if it equals admin, send this response. If it doesn't equal admin, send this response. Now, if you've watched the video on how matching works, in a way we've bypassed this default transaction, which parses the two specifics and then returns this response if the specifics don't match. But for the sake of example with editing, this is a very simple way to see how the editing process works and the operator works as well for matching the argument to the value. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this virtual service. We'll come back up to the API Explorer and we'll just uh, try this again with admin and make sure it's still performing right. So we can see we've got the role key as admin again. And now we can go into here and change it to guest. And we'll send this off to the virtual service and we can see that it has responded as guest. Now, if we change this to any random number, we can change guest to say one, two, three, and we hit send. Now we can see we're still getting the guest response because it doesn't equal admin. Therefore, it's taking that response rather than rolling back up to the default transaction. So as you build out your virtual services, the service image editor provides an excellent way where you can go in and modify the request and response data to make sure you're getting back exactly what you need out of your virtual service.